Hello, it is Tuesday the 21st of July, don't know if you can tell but I'm back in the hospital. Um, so where, where did we leave off? It was all to do with needing to get my lungs drained. That was following on from last Wednesday's appointment at Bart's. And then I was told that my lung drainage would happen before the weekend. So that would have been last Thursday or Friday. But I didn't hear anything. I did chase it twice and I was told that the referral to have the lungs drained was with the respiratory team. So there wasn't really much more that the oncology um, place could do. So... When I didn't hear anything by Friday, I thought, well, I guess I'm not hearing anything over the weekend. So, uh, yeah, just got on with the weekend. Didn't actually do much. And Monday, I didn't hear anything. I think I chased it. Yeah, I spoke to my nurse, my clinical nurse a specialist, and she said she would chase it. And then today, so today is Tuesday, uh, well, yesterday, oh, hang on, no, right, getting confused. I've been on these antibiotics for nearly a week, but the cough isn't really getting better. Sometimes I wake up in the mornings and I think, oh, cough's gone. But then when I get up, I start moving around, the breathlessness is back, the coughing happens again. So yeah, the cough hasn't really gone and the breathlessness might be a touch worse. Yesterday, Monday, I scared my dad, I think. So I walked up the stairs, I went into the room where he was and I started chatting away. But I was so out of breath from walking up the stairs, I was just gasping for air in between trying to speak. My dad was like, stop talking. Catch your breath. Like, okay. And then I got all upset because it's a really horrible feeling when you can't catch your breath. Um, so that didn't help. Getting upset makes the breathing even worse. And then today, so today's Tuesday, I was walking around my bath, my bathroom or my bedroom and I got so out of breath that I had to sit down and then I got upset again, and I was meant to be going out to meet some friends for a bit of lunch. I thought, I can't go, I'm so out of breath just walking around the house, how am I meant to go out? So I was just getting out of breath walking across the kitchen, just doing things that you shouldn't be getting out of breath from. My dad said, I think this is getting worse, and he decided to phone the hospital and then my one of my doctors phoned me just to talk about how I was feeling and she said look I'm sorry we haven't been in contact but we're planning to get your lungs drained on Friday and that she was just waiting for the time to be confirmed so she said if you can wait until Friday then just stay at home and until Friday but if it's really feeling that bad then you're gonna have to come in or I could have gone to my A&E I, I told her I don't really want to go to my local A&E because everything like all my scans my x-ray CT all happened at Bart's last week so I, I, I want to come back to Bart's and yeah they know what's going on I don't want to go to local A&E and start again so she said right let me just check if we have a bed for you and she said yeah come in so I'm in the hospital um, when I came in I was on the like chemotherapy day unit where they took bloods I got my confirmation that my two COVID tests I had done last week were negative so negative for having COVID now but also negative for the antibodies uh, they but because I was coming in again 
They had to do another COVID swab. They are horrible. And I, last week's one was horrible, but today's was even worse. I, it was just a different person doing it, different approach, which made me gag. And then when she stuck it up my nose, it's still hurting now. It's, it's nearly 10 o'clock at night. And I think I had this swab done at 5 p.m. ish. It is still burning here. Oh, when she did it, I yelped, I screamed, and I grabbed her arm. <laughs> I grabbed her arm and yanked the swab out. Luckily, she got enough on the swab that she didn't have to do it again. Uh, but yeah, it's still sore. So, since I've come in today, I had another x-ray. And the same doctor that I saw last week then came to see me today. And she said, I wanted to come and see you because I saw you last week and wanted to compare. So, that's why she specifically came to see me. And she said, the lungs are looking a little worse. Not drastically, but a little bit. So, said, like, we're going to keep you in. And hopefully, tomorrow, so that's Wednesday, I'll be getting the lungs drained. Not waiting until Friday. So, I'm in this little <coughs> private <coughs> room. But... Uh, <coughs> I think they just keep you in this room until you have your COVID swab back as negative and then they move people to like an open ward. Um, so yeah, hopefully seeing the respiratory doctor tomorrow and they'll start draining these lungs. I actually saw the x-ray today. I'm going to have to take a photo of it. Say... One of my lungs is worse than the other. One of them is like, it looks 50% shadowy, like halfway, yeah, up to, say that, say that's the lung, the whole screen. It looks like shadowy from there up. And the other lung is only like quarter shadowy. So hopefully, I'm getting them drained on tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And then they might keep me in another night because they want to monitor you after you've had that sort of procedure done. And then I hope to go home on Thursday. And I forgot my video camera, so I'm filming on my phone, which feels weird. And because the antibiotics haven't seemed to have an effect, they've put me on steroids which they didn't want to do initially because steroids suppress the immune system. So it's sort of undoing everything that the immunotherapy has done so far. But because the antibiotics haven't worked, they said, right, we need to put the, put you on steroids. But I also had, I had the steroids at about 5 PM. So I'm not really expecting to sleep tonight. That's why, yeah, it's 10 o'clock and I feel awake and anything else no I think I sound like I have a cold but I'm pretty sure it's from this swab going and making all this sore um ah and oh, you won't be able to see it now it's dark but from my room I have a very nice view of St Paul's I took a really nice photo just on my phone and the sun was going down it all the like orange rays were bouncing off of the top of the cathedral. So I'm gonna have to figure out on iMovie how I can get a little picture in here and show you my St. Paul's sunset photo. Actually being here, my breathing does feel a touch better because there's nothing to do. So I am just sitting in this chair. It's my cannula. I am just sitting in this chair. I will go to bed in a minute. Um, 
And there's no stairs, there's no walking for me to do. All I can really do is walk to the toilet. Which <coughs> is there. So yeah, just sitting still helps a lot. Oh, that was the other thing. Um, I should be seeing a dietitian here tomorrow. Just because of my weight, it's dropped quite a bit. Don't know if you can tell, but I look a bit gaunt. My mum thinks I look very gaunt. Um, and I know I've lost weight. And ideally, I wouldn't have lost this much weight. <laughs> but yeah, the doctor's here. This is an oncology unit ward thing that I've been moved to to stay the night. And they said, right, yeah, we can arrange for you to see a dietitian tomorrow. I said, okay, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. All right, I think I'm gonna go to bed and hopefully getting lungs drained tomorrow. Okay. I can't remember what today's date is. Great start. Let me check. Let me check. Wednesday, the 22nd of July. I'm not sure what this blotchiness is all about, but I didn't pack any makeup. So I was genuinely just considering could I rub some peanut butter as a bit of a um, concealer? Okay. <laughs> I'm not rubbing peanut butter as a concealer. Um, and I slept really badly. I only had two hours sleep. So I guess that's not helping things right now. I had two hours sleep because of the steroids that I had at five o'clock. So I couldn't fall asleep until midnight. And then a nurse came in to do observations at 2 a.m. All I wanted to do was sleep. Um, and then I couldn't go back to sleep since 2am. So I had the chest doctor come round this morning. I had my lovely oncologists come round, spoke to them for a bit, showed them the spread into the chest wall which has grown since starting this treatment of atezolizumab with Abraxin. Um, and then, yeah, the chest doctor came round and she did an ultrasound of my lungs. And she said that even though on the CT scan they looked like a lot of liquid, that it was because the CT scan is done lying down. So actually when she looked at it as an ultrasound, there really wasn't much there. There was a little bit in one lung and then a lot more on another lung. But she thinks that isn't what's causing the breathlessness because it's not that much. Um, so then, what else have I seen today? The dietitian came round and we've talked about ways that I could eat more, get more calories into my meals by like throwing nuts and stuff in to things. And she's given me these high caloric, caloric? Calor high calorie fat emulsion lactose and gluten free so this little thing is only 120 ml but it contains 600 calories 
Um, so you're meant to do it as like a 30 mil shot four times a day. The dietitian, I said to her, how do they taste? And she goes, I'm not saying anything. I'll let you make your own mind up. And I tried it and this is the lemon flavor, by the way. I tried it and I didn't mind it. It was all right. Not bad. Um, so then I got, well, I started feeling tired at about, I can't remember what time. Three-ish, four-ish, not sure. So I started to have a little lie down, but then I had a nice knock at my door, telling me that the porter was here to take me for a CT scan. So I've been for another CT scan. Um, and I think I fell asleep in the wheelchair on the way down to the scan. And whilst I was waiting to go into the scan, so I. I am tired, it's not helping things. And then when I got back from my CT scan, my oncologist came back up and she said that they got the lung, God. they got the chest or lung radiologist to look at the scans and they do think that it is the cancer in the lungs which is causing my breathlessness. So, even though I've had, I haven't even finished two cycles of the immunotherapy with the chemo, well, I'm stopping it because it's not working. Because it's the cancer's progressed whilst I'm on it, whilst I've been on it. I started on June the 5th, so I've been on it, what's today, 22nd. Been on it about seven weeks and the cancer has progressed into the lungs. And she said that there is another chemo drug that they want to put me on starting ASAP. So, on Friday I am having my lungs drained, this little bit of liquid, we, they are going to drain it, and then I will be going straight on to Aribulin, which is going to be once a week for two weeks, then a week off. And um, I was, I've been doing some research online, of course, and it looks like it only takes 10 minutes for the Arubulin to go in. A three minute flash and then done. So that's a pos positive. I'm trying to find some more positives. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. So I guess it's back to the drawing board. It's really frustrating because I've changed so much. So yeah, back to the drawing board, I think. Figure that some things out, see, see what's going wrong, why it's not worked. I was so positive, I was certain that this was going to work and that I always fall into these, even though atezolizumab with the Braxine doesn't have a great success rate, it's like 30%, um, I always fall into these really small percentages, so I was like, well, I'll fall into this one, for sure. So it's a bit gutting, gutting, is that even a word? Don't know. A bit disappointing, I feel a bit gutted. Uh, 
yeah, time to start third lot of treatment.